today I will tell you about healthcare technology and how to affect the impact in the uh, operating field. So if we are thinking about technology, we can think it uh, at the level of individual, at the institutional, uh, or wider well-being uh, service county that then uh, as we are in Finland having, we supposed to have uh, several new uh, well-being service counties in Finland next year in the beginning of next year. And then we can take technology about the uh, hospital district level. And all these make some kind of system. And I like to uh, uh, um, compare this system like a Ferris wheel. And I will tell you later why. So if we take the individual level at first, there are different kinds of equipment and applications, how to measure your welfare. And they aim is to make some progress in your own healthcare taking and how to make new targets to provide your health. And uh, these are just one example. For example, uh, smart watches, uh, rings, what measures your functions, and also uh, used in uh, uh, healthcare, for example, uh, home, home care, those diagnostic scales. And when we go to institutional level, for example, hospitals and home care, there have been excellent uh, presentation and, and uh, experiences, uh, what kind of measures they can be utilized in healthcare and what kind of equipment to promote that uh, therapy, for example, injured uh, customers. These are some, kind, some uh, projects that we are in Tampere University involving with, for example, Digi Health, Health Project or Robo RFID, where you can um, use smart clothes. You can have sensors that uh, measures your uh, body functions or your movements. And that's very valuable data for healthcare. For example, robots are one of pilots in, in those projects that you can utilize for example, transportation, uh, medicine, transportation. And that is one resource besides humans and people in the hospital uh, environment. And if you go to home care, there can be, for example, medicine dosing uh, automations that can utilize data to healthcare and home care professionals. And also safety watches can produce data from the client uh, functions and also movements. And there are different kinds of applications for remote, uh, remote uh, consultation between client and uh, and uh, professionals. So, as we have seen in the previous uh, presentations, today the East basis of this is to make it. And Tampere University is having one project, probably six, where the data is in the core. And that aim is to uh, promote collaboration with, between different actors and make data driven uh, approach. Data has huge potential and new legislation is needed as well to have new kind of data policy. And that new legislation enables to make more efficient use of hospital actors and utilize that they have their data. But there are challenges as we have heard from the, especially from the second uh, presentation, how to utilize that the data. Is it, uh, is the quality of data uh, good enough for our purpose? But it enables those different kind of analysis, comparison of diseases and clients, and it enables simulations. And it, it enables predicting and preventing diseases. But data. If we are thinking about that left side figure, there are only few actors in healthcare sector that are providing data. 
And if you think that how to integrate that data with different actors to get some uh, valuable data for measures, what is the effectiveness of technology? It's very challenging. I think it's quite an impossible because I heard yesterday that even in Tampere region new area, there are hundreds of uh, different healthcare systems, IT systems to operate in. And if you think that you should integrate that systems and data, it's challenging, it's very challenging. And that, that as those notes that I have taken, that there are several systems with uh, different institutions and different market system deliveries as well, not only the public sector actors. And there are different professionals to share that, uh, information and data. But when we are thinking beside technology that people there in the field, there are different cultures, there are different practices that the people are having. So when we are thinking about analysis, it, uh, the rules are in economic or practical engineering and operational analysis. And when we think about healthcare sector, manufacturing industry has made those measures and uh, given price for the different operation steps. So why don't healthcare, why did it so challenging to do that? As uh, Alpha told in the morning that uh, you need to prove your equipment to have different kind of effect in medicine field. What is the effectiveness of that application or equipment? Uh, when we are thinking measuring, it is much more easier to measure some, some economic approach. But when you take social, for example, this uh, quality of service, besides, it's very challenging. So now I'm talking about public sector. Why it is so difficult or challenging to prioritize those operating steps and give them a price so that we can have a wider scale measuring about that effectiveness of technology. I will uh, introduce you one case for the Digi platform. It's made, made meaning a digital home uh, in English. And uh, the case is from city of Tampere. There have been a, a design uh, <laughs> by two of uh, researchers, uh, the Spotidiki uh, evaluation model, how to evaluate the effectiveness of technology. And they have identified that uh, there need to be a resource, for example, technology and competence to utilize that technology. But besides technology, new processes are needed as well. They need to create new way to operate. Uh, they need new kind of data policy in the city level, at the city level. But also, when you are taking new technology uh, with your practices, you need to have some kind of implementation plan. So when they are thinking about that measuring, they identified potential effects and the circumstances that the potential effect could happen. So this is the PUHA cost benefit evaluation tool. So it is, uh, its aim is to support technology in home care and produce some kind of cost benefit at the city level. It uh, helps allocate new uh, resources the new one or existing resources and to obtain economically, economically sustainable operations. The data is based on this healthcare cost system and they are measuring, for example, hospital days, outpatient care, emergency visits, nurse household calls and other remote services. But uh, besides these operation costs comes the equipment rental costs, or such of use, licentiation, and of course, everything is connected to internet. But technology uh, utilization requires also education by staff, but also the clients. Uh, it can be a diagnostic scale. 
and cardiac failure pale that we are measuring in this pilot. So this is the PUPA cost-benefit in evaluation tool. It's not more than Excel uh, platform that we are utilizing, but uh, I thought that it is ROSA in Finnish, but there are certain indicators that we are uh, hoping to get from the city of Tampere and all different business levels that uh, need to be uh, delivering the data. And that is a huge challenge in the, at the city level. How we integrate the data, who is uh, responsible of certain data that we can fill all these roles and get some kind of uh, uh, visualization uh, in the right side of the figure. So it's measuring certain indicators and it will illustrate us what is the target that we should focus on. What are the resources? What is the expectations? What are the benefits and what are the costs at the individual level, but also city business operating level? And uh, we were asking that, uh, how often would you like to uh, use this kind of tool to uh, get some idea uh, how the resources are uh, meeting the needs and what is the cost benefit of the technology, one technology that is used. They told us that perhaps one or two times a year. So we were exhausted that. Why so seldom? Because if this is the tool for evaluator resources, this can give you chance to react very rapidly and focus where, to, where you need to focus. So we prefer that this, you, this should be used at least four times a year so that you can react very rapidly. So some conclusions. As I saw the example of Uha, it gives a trend what the effect of the technology could be, but it needs systematic data sources and price for every step of the operation level and steps for, for uh, home care, but also at the business level and integration between uh, systems, but also practices in the operation field. As I said, data has boundless potential, but we need to uh, take account also legislation and data policy limits. And integration of data, practices and culture is very challenging. And economical uh, measures are easier to make, but if you take uh, quality factors beside it's very challenging. And there is also needed the data management and uh, knowledge management, but also strategy at the city level, how to operate with this kind of tools. So what about this theorem? If one part of the system is not in balance, so producing uh, certain data, the data and information that is needed to take this kind of measurement tool uh, in use, the system will collapse. So there need to be uh, shared strategy, shared uh, practices and systematic data, uh, data collection and data utilization to take some benefits of the evaluation of technology. So that's all. Thank you.